Life is nothing short of a miracle. Despite forming the basis of all existence, the process of life is still largely a mystery. Inanimate matter imbued with a spark that can never be replenished once it goes out. While we are still far away from unraveling the mysteries of life, we are in the privileged position where we are able to observe life and its various forms freely, and in the process bearing witness to some truly awesome displays. Through evolution, the code that inscribes life, the DNA, is in constant flux, influenced by mutation and adaptation to forever strive for a more effective form. These genetic changes are what produce the taxonomy and phylogeny of our world, mapping out trees of ancestry and relation which denote all the creatures that exist. This includes the mighty subspecies, brethren differentiated by genetic changes over multiple generations. But genetic changes affect entire populations, entire groups of living organisms. Life does however not just play out at a population level, but also on an individual level. While evolution pushes entire species towards new, more effective forms, a singular creature can itself undergo changes in response to extreme pressures. Monsters are especially prone to this, as singular individuals transform over the course of their lives into stronger, more ferocious versions of themselves when pressed against a the wall. These are what the guild calls variants. To understand variants and how they differ from subspecies, imagine this. A creature with a large horn on its nose. If a group of these creatures migrates into an area where that horn is disadvantageous, individuals with smaller horns will be more successful in passing on their genes. Gradually, over multiple generations, the horn will shrink and eventually vanish entirely. This is genetic adaptation, the base process of evolution, and leads to the creation of new species and subspecies. Once arrived at this final, hornless state, all individuals of this species will be born without a horn, as that is now the genetic plan. This hornless creature will produce a hornless child. Now, imagine that same creature from the beginning, horn still intact. But instead of migrating, this creature suffers a more unfortunate fate. An accident breaks off its horn. Without its main weapon, its pièce de résistance, the creature is surely doomed to die. And it likely will. But life is nothing if not resilient. The creature may instead begin compensating for loss of its horn through heightened aggression and increased muscle mass. The stress flooding its body with adrenaline and transforming it in the process. Over time, this individual will become much bulkier and dangerous than its brethren, a scarred warrior adorned with a broken horn. This is individual adaptation wherein changes to the body and behavior happen within the lifetime of one individual creature. Because this change is not genetic, this creature's offspring will be born with its horn intact again. This is the fundamental mechanism that produces variants. So, variants are individuals which undergo non-genetic adaptations within their lifetime. These changes can generally not be passed on or inherited, meaning that each variant has to develop on its own. While this might sound like there should be an infinite number of types of variants for each and every species, in reality, most species consistently produce the same variants, due to them being predisposed to both encountering specific causes and adapting to those causes in a specific way. To further classify and differentiate the various types of variants between each other, one must ask, two questions. Is the variant permanent or temporary? And is it natural or abnormal? The question of permanence pertains to whether or not a variant can ever return to being a normal individual after its change, or if its transformation lasts until death. For example, a furious Rajang cannot return to being a normal Rajang due to its missing tail. It is a permanent variant. 
Meanwhile, a black Diablos, who was originally misclassified as a subspecies, is merely a female Diablos in heat. It turns black during the mating season but then reverts into its regular coloration shortly after. It is a temporary variant. The question of natural versus abnormal is very straightforward. Are these variants part of the main species' natural life cycle or are they abnormalities caused by accidents and trauma? The Frostfang Baryoth is a Baryoth variant that develops due to old age. Baryoth are usually short-lived due to their highly competitive and confrontative lifestyle, but any Baryoth that reaches a certain age will become a Frostfang. It is a natural variant, as it occurs as a normal part of the Baryoth's life. The aforementioned Black Diablos would also fall into this category. Conversely, a Crimson Glow Valstrax is a Valstrax variant that has its Dragon Sack malfunction, flooding it with dragon energy until it succumbs to the pain. This is an abnormal variant, as it is the result of a painful defect. These two axes, permanent versus temporary, natural versus abnormal, are useful in classifying and analyzing the variants that the guild has so far found. But, like any man-made model, there are margin cases and exceptions. A Savage Devil Joe is theoretically a permanent variant, as its unleashed dragon energy will rage until the creature's demise. However, in the exact moment of its death, the Savage Devil Joe actually reverts back into a regular Devil Joe, due to the draconic cycle that created the variant being broken once the Devil Joe's heart stops. So, while it is seemingly and functionally a permanent variant, it could be argued that it is not. For another margin example, the Chaotic Gore Magala is a Magala which has failed to molt from its juvenile Gore form into its mature Shagaru form. This would clearly denote it as an abnormal variant, until one considers the cause of this failed molting. Whenever a Shagaru Magala successfully emerges from its cocoon, it undergoes an additional invisible change. All Magala spread their frenzy virus through the air, but a Shagaru spreads it by binding it to an aerosol substance created in its body. This substance is a signal compound, which, when inhaled by a juvenile Gore Magala, mutates them and dooms them into eventually becoming a chaotic Gore Magala once they try to molt. This brutal betrayal is believed to be a sort of natural population control, never allowing too many Shagaru Magalas to exist too close to one another. Thus, while the Chaotic Gore Magala is an abnormal variant created through mutation, it could be argued that its existence is simply part of the Magala's unique way of life. For all their varieties and unique situations, variants do exhibit some general patterns. They are often much more powerful than their regular brethren, as their adaptations bestow upon them newfound strength. Crucially, however, these are generally improved versions of the abilities the base species already had. Variants generally do not gain a new element or otherwise entirely new ability, they simply enhance and perfect the arsenal their species is already known for. This is in contrast to subspecies, which often gain completely new abilities and elements. Variants are also generally physically larger, and often look like enraged and otherwise powered up individuals of their base species. Variants were long believed to represent the pinnacle of their respective species. Individuals pushed to the brink, where they tapped into their hidden potential and reached a new peak of strength. However, over time, a new subgroup of variants was gradually discovered, variants whose destructive power is an entirely different level. They would eventually be classified as deviants. What exactly differentiates a deviant from a regular variant in scientific terms is not quite clear, but the guild generally upholds a very functional definition. Deviants are extremely rare variants which are so overwhelmingly powerful that any hunting activity involving them must be regulated and limited to only the most elite master hunters, as they are only accessible through special permits. 
Because of this restriction, research into deviants has historically been extremely sparse. Whenever one appears, the first priority is damage control, leaving little time for extensive analysis. However, some information has nonetheless been gleaned. Deviants seem to emerge the same way variants do, through individual changes that do not seem to be inherited. However, some deviants, such as the Dread King Rathalos, do seem to originate from birth defects or other genetic factors, so there does seem to be a DNA component present in some cases. That aside, most deviants are either exceptionally old individuals or creatures that have survived intense hardship and become unparalleled threats in the process. Additionally, while variants generally only upgraded the abilities of the base species, deviants very often do exhibit entirely new abilities. For example, the Silverwind Nargakuga is a Nargakuga deviant which develops when a Nargakuga reaches advanced age. Many years in combat have sharpened this creature into an unstoppable killing machine, and the greying hairs upon its fur coat serve as a sign of pride, power, and wisdom. Its wing blades are honed to absolute perfection, able to weaponize air pressure itself. What's more, some deviants are actually accidentally created by the guild. When a hunter mortally wounds a Diabolos without killing it, that individual Diabolos begins roaming the world, tempered by the experience, its aggression heightening and its skin darkening, until its broken horns regrow into a twisted crown, denoting it as a bloodbath Diabolos, one of the most dangerous deviants known to the guild. Deviants such as these present a worst case scenario, and the guild takes them very seriously. Deviant hunts are only open to hunters who have received special permits from the guild, and they are strictly regulated to minimize casualties. The existence of deviants like Bloodbath Diablos or the Deadeye Yangaruga are part of the reason why the guild is so careful about this. If hunter intervention can create deviants, then overhunting these creatures might push them to become even more powerful. If it is possible for a Diablos to become this terrifying just by being hunted and failed to kill once, then the potential damage of letting rookie hunters attempt deviants could be catastrophic. Thus, the guild takes caution when dealing with deviants. Recently, the guild was blessed with somewhat of a breakthrough in deviant research. In the eastern Kamura region, many areas were affected by the celestial serpents, airborne elder dragons whose presence summons storms and destruction. While most creatures perish in the hurricane, some monsters are able to adapt and survive their encounter with the serpents. These individuals are crowned as rampage apexes, and themselves pose sizable threats to the surrounding villages. During an information exchange between Kamura hunters and the Waikademy of Berna, researchers noticed something fascinating. Rampage apexes were, in both appearance and ability, extremely similar to deviants. Some were, in fact, identical. This implies that deviants are a reproducible phenomenon, that if you push a Zenogar hard enough, it will consistently transform into a Thunderlord, meaning that deviants are, in one way or another, the final zenith that any species can reach. This will however require further analysis, and due to the immense danger of both deviants and apex monsters, progress is likely to remain slow. The world is full of this. Odes to the perseverance of life. Even without the constant momentum of genetic evolution, life will struggle, kicking and screaming, until it finds a way. Variants are just one example of this, individual monsters whose potential for change and transformation puts them head and shoulders above their brethren. Whatever form they may take, the march of life goes on, and both the variants and the deviants intend to follow it. Thank you so much for watching, as usual, 
and consider subscribing and consider maybe pledging to the Patreon if you enjoy this kind of content. There is still plenty to come and I am glad that you guys keep watching the silly stuff I produce. And of course, as always, a very special thank you to all of our patrons, including Fictionape, Sini, Claire Meboon, Direction, Geo, Jameson Tate, Makot O2, Mr. Pyramid, Mr. Meander, Paracha, Pedefuego, Peros Coco, Project Eisenman, and Wisdom Minari. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.